Hello and welcome. I am in Space Engineers at the moment. I've been enjoying this game quite a lot ever since I got it. About a year back. However, when I first got it, I didn't play it much because the computer that I had at the time could barely handle the game at all. <laughs> However, the computer I have now handles it no issue. And so, ever since I got this computer about a year ago, well, I've had the game for a I've I had the game for a couple months by the time I got this computer, but I've had this computer for about a year, and so that's how long I've been playing the game and Hello, what? Why is Hamachi running? Who knows? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, anyways, yeah. I If you don't have this game, I really recommend you get it. It's, I've been enjoying it a lot. It's probably the, one of the best games I've ever played. Also, Medieval Engineers 2, uh, which is a bit more recent from the same company. Uh, Keen Software House. Um, I haven't exactly been playing Medieval Engineers as much as I ex as I had expected. Be mainly because of a lack of inspiration. Because I understand what how to use the blocks. I understand how to use all the blocks in that game and how to. You know, I understand all the features, but it's just I I lack the inspiration to actually use it for anything that I don't end up deleting in rage. <laughs> but in Space Engineers, I have limitless ideas on things to do because it's, it's th those few tiny differences, well, tiny differences, I, I am pretty sure the difference of a barely working cart and a phenomenal spaceship is a uh, it, it, that is most definitely a tiny difference. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah it, it just the the differences though, like the things that Space Engineers has that Medieval Engineers doesn't. It just makes it a much more enjoyable game for me. And but anyways, the main feature of this video is not advertisement, but this thing here. This is an idea I had on distributing power around. And in order to make, because the original idea was just this alone. However, in order to make this practical, there's a lot of other changes that would have to be made as well. And a few other things that seem unrelated but would, pro but would probably be needed for balancing. Oh, hello. But anyways, moment of pause there. What this here is doing, well, what it should be doing if this were a feature in the game is we're generating power here and this system here is turning that electrical energy into mechanical energy and then over here it's converting the mechanical energy back into electrical energy to power the spotlight. And like I said, there's a lag spike. You, you keep that in mind. <laughs> um, but like I said, a change to make this practical is, at the moment in the game, electricity can, power, can travel through blocks infinitely. Like, put power in here and it can travel as far as you need it to to, to power something. Which is why this spotlight is able to work, because the power is going from the reactor through the whole thing into that but to make this concept practical, there would be a limit to how far it can travel. And so basically, as, the, as you get further away from the nearest source of energy, the amount of energy that's available decreases until it hits zero. And so therefore, if you have one base here and then another base over there, you can't just build a giant power line that just goes over there and just sits still it, it it's the same uh, it, it's the same general purpose and it get it, it gets the exact same job done and from a distance it looks the same but it's not as cool you understand it, this has a wow factor 
See, because just a giant metal stick in space. Hold on a second. I under like a giant metal stick in space. It, it's like it gets the job done, but it, it's just there. It just sits there. But this thing, it moves. <laughs> so it's instantly better. You understand that? <laughs> um, but anyways, that, that would allow you to have one base that's in charge of generating all the power for your entire network of bases. And then you have these little like connection lines that go all the way from that central base all the way out to all your other bases. And it just carries power. And along this whole thing here, like along the way there, there's no available elect electricity. It's all the energy is converted into mechanical energy, the movement of the metal. And also another thing of the distance limit is the distance you can travel would depend on the block you're traveling through. So like in heavy armor, you wouldn't be able to go as far because all the space inside that would be used for the electrical wiring is taken up by the extra metal. And something like, I don't know, um, this thing here, it would probably be like a dead stop, like power can't travel through that because, well, maybe power can travel through it, but not a lot, because it, as you can see, there's obviously not much room for electrical wiring. So any electrical wiring in there wouldn't be able to carry that great of current. And so the amount of power you'd be able to put send through that would be far less than if you were to use a giant block like this. And the cat wants to leave the room. I will deal with that real quick, and I'm back. Cat has left the room. Should not get any disturbances from that anytime soon. Anyways. Now. In terms of this here. And, and, and maybe another, maybe like an option would be added to the rotor, or another block would be added to, that would, instead of using electrical energy to make mechanical energy would use mechanical energy to make electrical energy. However, when I another idea I had was that the amount of power that gets generated on this end is less than the amount of power that is used on this end. However, you could connect multiple generators on this end to this one line to get the rest of that power out. So Maybe this thing is generating half the power that that thing is using. And so you would have to use two of these to get 100% efficiency. And to attach more, it's pretty simple. You just extend this. Add another little thing there. Bring this out and get that guy there. And This is also how you would set up the initial bit, and I won't bother you going in and taking merge blocks to connect that all together because getting this set up took forever. <laughs> uh, probably because I hadn't done it in quite a while. I'm out of practice. But anyways, yeah, so you could pretend that those are connected. And so now you've got two of these, and that in having in both of them working together is able to generate a hundred percent of the energy that's being put into the, on that end therefore you can get a hundred percent efficiency however to balance it out and prevent people from getting infinite energy out of something like this each time you add one of these it slows this down because the idea is the amount of power that's being generated depends on the speed of this guy. Depends on how fast he's moving. So right now, the that rotor over there is set at maximum speed, so it'd be generating as much power as it possibly can. And you can connect as many rotors as you can possibly manage. However, as the speed decreases, you can 
it'll generate less power. And each time you connect another generator rotor to the main bar here, it slows it down a bit. So therefore, as you add more and more generators on this end, it slows down, and so they start generating less power until it gets to the point where there's too many of them and that thing doesn't have enough torque to turn and this thing doesn't move anymore and you get no power out of it. And I understand that that might be difficult to set up, but it, it surely it's not impossible. And it's a pretty cool idea. It's a, it's a pretty neat concept, you have to admit. <laughs> but um, in terms of the limited distance for the power travel, and if you wanted to like get power around your individual base and not have to deal with setting up these giant things like in the middle of your base just because your reactors are too far away, maybe like fix the batteries so that well, th they sort of already have the functionality but I remember watching uh, Sage in his uh, joint survival series and they were having a bit of issues with their batteries not working quite as you would expect them to during a freak moment when their giant solar array got disconnected from their base <laughs> yeah Good times. But, um... So, yeah, and maybe, like, get batteries working to the point where you could very efficiently use them as relay points throughout your base, and so it would basically reset the travel distance. And... Oh, wow, you can see through this. That is... I didn't notice that earlier. Anyways. So... Basically, the idea on how this would work in real life is a s very weak current goes in and it builds up in the battery until it gets to the point where it can release it back out as a strong current. And so that's how that would work. And, um, yeah, that's about it for my concept idea here. And if the developers at Keen Software House are watching this. I am really grateful for you taking the time. And I really hope you consider adding this. And even if you don't add it, I would like to see somebody else make, like, try to do this as a mod. Just to see if the concept would work. <laughs> because obviously, this here, it, it's just an ex it's just a model, because obviously the power is traveling through here like might as well just have a giant metal bar in space because <laughs> all the because with the with the way it works right now all this here is is just look at me I'm fancy <laughs> if you know what I mean <laughs> anyways yeah that's that I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.